Uh, Herzlichen uh, willkommen. Uh, ich bin Peter Martin. Ich bin aus uh, uh, Nimwegen, die Niederlande. Um, mein uh, Deutsch ist nicht so gut, so uh, ich uh, soll meine uh, Präsentation in Englisch tun. Uh, welcome uh, in this with this presentation about uh, the Joomla uh, 3.1 uh, program module. module. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I, I'm Peter Martin. I'm really into open source software. I like Linux, so it's a bit funny to be in the Microsoft room using an Apple. Um, this is what I will uh, tell you about uh, during my presentation. Um, uh, first of all, I will dis display, um, explain something about uh, extensions in general, and then I will just start uh, developing a module. Uh, if you have any question, you can do it in German, uh, if you talk slowly, or in English. First of all, um, who, is in the, who in the audience um, creates their own modules already? Okay, okay. Also for uh, 2.5 and 3.1, yeah? Um, for the people who don't uh, uh, program modules, uh, the five extensions you can use in Joomla are uh, these ones, components, modules, plugins, templates, and language files. And with the component, uh, uh, components are the most important thing in Joomla. Uh, they are uh, more difficult to program, and it's better to start with a module because it's really easy, and I will show you in a minute. You can uh, activate a component in the URL by putting option as com and then the component name. In the back end, you go uh, to the components and then the component name to manage it, except for the content component because it's so important, the content, it has its own uh, menu item. Uh, a component has something they called CRUD, uh, they have multiple modi, so uh, one module, I mean one component can sometimes create new items, read items, update items, or delete items. A module is more of a sort of widget, yeah? Like this. Uh, uh, a, a module is, um, uh, it's a sort of widget. It only displays information. There is no internal uh, thing like a, a CRUD, like a, a component has. And uh, you can manage it in the back end under extensions and a module manager. It's activated by the menu item, which is called item ID. Uh, when you are using uh, Ceph URLs, you won't see it. Uh, plugins are the third kind of uh, extensions and uh, they are working in the back background. You don't see those, except when you are using the editor, because the editor is a plugin. Um, this is how uh, extensions work together. For instance, you have, uh, Joomla has a search functionality, uh, which is a search form, but it can also be just a tiny box in your template, here, and then it's a module, and uh, if you put something in the module and you set you say uh, submit, the module will just submit the contents of this, uh, of this input field to the component which processes it and will uh, show you the results. But the component itself doesn't know anything about the database. Uh, you have search plugins and those search plugins know uh, how to uh, find the information and how to display this information. So uh, these three work together in this way. Um, the modules, when you are uh, cre creating modules, you have uh, module positions in your template. Uh, since Joomla uh, 1.6, you have to uh, put, uh, to enable those in the um, uh, template manager, the preview mo module positions. Otherwise, you can't use uh, this in the URL to show your uh, modules. Uh, and this is a part of uh, a code you put in your template uh, to, uh, and then uh, modules can, can be uh, displayed over there. So let's start with the mod module. There are front-end modules and back-end modules. A module consists uh, of mainly two files, one PHP file with the code and one XML file 
with the installation procedure and the per parameters. And of course, you have a database reference. So Joomla is able um, to use your module. Um, let's go. Can I put it, can I can't close? Oh. I heard uh, all those voices. Okay. Um, so uh, there is a web link component in Joomla. And this component, uh, uh, you can manage web links. And uh, if visitors click on the web links, uh, it registers the clicks. So you can uh, display information about which uh, links are most popular. If you look at the database table, it's called web links. And here I say, uh, um, uh, hashtag, because it can be anything, it's a prefix of your database. Um, it has also, it has these kinds of fields, but it also has a field which is called created, and it will store the date when you create a web link. But Joomla doesn't use it anywhere. So what I wanted to do was to create a module to display the most recent web links. So uh, this is what I want to show you here. Um, to start, you have to uh, create um, within uh, the module directory a new uh, folder. In my case, I call it DB8 because that's my company name, and then latest web links. If you use something uh, like your initials or your, your hosting company name, which is really small, uh, then you can easily find everything about, uh, when you are developing multiple stuff, you, you can easily find it because it's grouped together. So I started with uh, one file, which is um, db8latestweblinks.php, and I just put um, this, these two co uh, lines in it. The first line here, it says jxec. It's a, co it's, um, a mechanism to, co to uh, check if Joomla retrieves this module, or if it's retrieved from external uh, using the URL, because you, you don't want that. So it's a protection, and it just, this just shows one uh, line of code. Um, the XML files on the next page. When I uh, have those files, the PHP and the XML file, I can install it just with the discover function of Joomla. Uh, you know, all know the discover function of Joomla? Because it's really powerful. Um, you go to the extension manager, say discover, click on the discover button, and then every extension which is on your website, but ha does not have a database reference in your um, extensions uh, table, will be uh, shown. And <coughs> when it's installed, you also have to install it within the module manager. So it's two steps. Uh, this is the information you put in your XML file. And everything which what, you, what is blue is necessary, is required. Um, the black uh, uh, lines of code are just uh, useful because it it's will display information in the backend of your component. Here, with this part, the files, um, Joomla knows which files it needs to install when you try to install uh, a mechanism of Joomla. So this is what I did. I went to Extension Manager to discover. I, I press discover and uh, then I noticed this line of code. I mean this line of, um, of a module. So I uh, uh, said install and after it was installed, I went to the um, uh, module manager and there I said new and then I just saved this. Um, what you see here, all those uppercase characters, is because I don't have any language file with it. And here I have a description which is a label, and if I have a language file with it, I put the, the real description in a language file. But because there is no language file yet, uh, you have this funny line of code. And when you install it, and when you uh, uh, put it in a module position, it will say something like this. In this case, Peter's recent web links, because it doesn't have any other code. So the component, it works, I mean the module, but what you want, uh, want to accomplish is to uh, display information from your Joomla's database. So what you do, um, you have to use Joomla's database object. First, you have to call Joomla's database object with a line of code. 
and instantiates an empty query. Uh, then build a query, but don't use hard-coded SQL. I will show you how to do it in a minute. Um, when you have built the query object, you have to feed this query object to the database and then retrieve the results from the database object. So this is what I did. First, uh, again, uh, check if uh, it's safe, to, uh, if it's not uh, run from external. Uh, this is the, the, the method to uh, set the database object, get database object. And here I say a query, uh, a query object, get query true. If you don't do uh, this line of code, you will use um, the last query it, it you not used because uh, uh, this is a reset of the query. And this is really uh, uh, smart. Um, the query object, and it says query and then a, an arrow, uh, select, and then uh, I have to put all the, the fields in here which I want to show. Um, and then I have two lines of code. You can put a query in front of it, but uh, they call this chaining. This is uh, a bit faster than if you put a, a string query, string query, string query. Um, what is really smart, if you use string query, string query, string query, you can start with string query order, and then string query select, and then string query from. While if you do it uh, with hard-coded uh, SQL, you will get errors because you should not never start with an, with an order. Joomla is smart enough to know the right order of all those uh, query object commands. Um, then I uh, will uh, use my database object, which I uh, uh, instantiated here, and I say set query. Uh, the query object I just uh, created, and then uh, uh, show me a uh, result from one to seven. And then uh, I, I ask for uh, the, database, uh, lo um, the, the database object for the load object list. Uh, the load, the, the, that's items. And here I say, for every item, display it. So this is what I displayed. And you see here Raspberry Pi, and that's my session for tomorrow. Um, if it doesn't work, if you have problems, uh, just first try with uh, echo the SQL. So if you see the query, you just copy the query, you change the prefix to your own prefix, and you use PHP my SQL, uh, sorry, PHP my admin, uh, to run this query. And if it works okay, then it's something else. Uh, with print underscore R, you can display everything in this object. And also, um, Google Chrome and Firefox have handy add-ons to uh, look at the source code, the HTML source code. It might help you. So what I, yeah? Hmm. But it will show, yeah, it will show it. Yeah, I, I can. <laughs> Okay, so um, the question was, um, can you echo an object? Well, usually you can't, but uh, uh, Dave Hurley just told me that it's a sort of magic method in Joomla, so you can echo this, which I'm really glad that you can. Um, Object-oriented programming. What I just did was just one, two, two pieces of code, um, two files, uh, a couple of lines of code, and I had seven items on display. But I want to have more control, more flexibility. Joomla has a MVC, which means Model View Controller. And if you use these kinds of equipment, like a DVD player, uh, a television screen, and a controller, remote control, then you can describe how it works. Um, I use this example from Joseph LeBlanc. Joseph to blank, he uh, explained it with these kinds of uh, equipment. So, you have data, and this data is on a DVD. Your television and your remote control don't know anything about this data. Uh, your television just shows what it gets. Um, and your um, DVD player just gets the data and just pushes the data to some other thing. Uh, the controller, with the controller you just control everything. So they 
it doesn't know anything about the television. It doesn't know anything about the, um, uh, the DVD, the, the date on the DVD. So if you use this kind of method with a module, uh, it's a bit different. I mean, uh, with a component, you have a controller, a model, and a view. With a module, you only have one view, which is the template. You have one model, which is mostly in, the help, in a helper file. And you have a controller, which is just uh, the, the point of entry of this module. So if I go to my model again, I created a new file. It's helper.php. And helper.php is the file where I uh, will create my model. In this case, I just copied these lines of code from my previous uh, example. I added some new blue lines. And here I, uh, I, I define a class. Uh, I define a, a method within this class. And here I return the items. So this is my helper file. Then I go to my template file. I create a new folder, tmpl. Uh, I create one file called default.php. And I just copy, again, the, the, the code I already had. Um, the same with uh, uh, my uh, mod db8 latest weblinks.php. Um, I removed all the code. First, I retrieved the helper file. Then uh, I define uh, the params, if there are any. Uh, and I, hear, uh, um, I, uh, I call for this um, uh, class, the helper class, uh, to get the items. And then I uh, uh, require a layout path for my template layout. This is everything. And this is what you get. Exactly the same as before. Only with one dif difference. Uh, if you uh, want to create a template override, you can do it with this. Because you just copy um, this, this line, this, this file, tmpl default.php. You copy this file, put it in your template in the HTML folder, and then you can change it. So you can change the HTML output. Um, what I just created was a module with seven, uh, uh, seven web links from all the categories. There was no, there you, there was no any, um, how do you say it? It's not flexible. So if you use parameters, you create flexibility in your component. These are the kinds of uh, parameters you can uh, put in your uh, module. And you create those in your XML file. Um, and you have to uh, change the helper.php file as well uh, to use those parameters. So first of all, I went to my XML file. It's the uh, db8 latest weblinks.xml. And I just added some code. It says config and then uh, uh, params, field params, and something else. And what you see in orange here is on this sheet. This is the only thing I want to know. First of all, I want a category ID so that people who want to use my module can select, I want to see the latest web links in this category. Or uh, I also have a counter. I don't want seven, I want five, five results, or maybe three. So this is, uh, you, here you create flexibility within the, the, the number of results. Um, I also have a, a label and a description. It's for the back end. So this is what I did in the helper file. It's just the same file, but with a couple of lines of code. Here, I uh, use the, um, uh, the category ID, and here I use the, um, uh, the count. And it says, if there is no count, just say it's uh, only display five results. So with these kinds of lines, I created flexibility in my parameters, in, in my module. So this is the back end. Here I have a category. I just selected other resources. Uh, I want to see five. And now I don't get seven, but I get five from one category. Um, this is nice to have parameters. Uh, we are in uh, Deutschland now, uh, um, So. My module is not really useful here. I mean, you, you can read English, 
but you want to have it in German. Uh, or maybe in Holland you want to have it in Dutch. So you have language files. Uh, if you use language files, you create flexibility for your module to distribute it in, uh, to other countries, but also to use the language overrides in Joomla. Um, you have language labels in an XML file. You just define those. And you have to use JTEXT in your module to display those. You can put the um, language files in Joomla's uh, language folder. I prefer to keep uh, my language files with my module because it's easier to, uh, to distribute later on. So what I did, I created um, <coughs> two files uh, in my uh, DBA latest web links. I created a, um, a directory called language. In language, I created uh, uh, for English the, the default file, which is called db 8 latest Maybe you have seen that there is also a file called sys.ini. Does anyone know what uh, sys.ini does? does? Um, sorry? Yeah, but what system was? Yeah, it's, if you have a long language file, uh, and it's called ini, um, in the backend of Joomla, uh, when you have to, uh, when you want to install stuff, it looks to the um, XML files, but it looks to the uh, sys.ini, which are really sh uh, short, so it's fast. If you have a long language files and it only looks in uh, .ini, it has to load all those files. It will slow down a website uh, for the administrators. So this is just to, to speed it up. It only has two lines. I will show it. Um, first of all, I had to change something in my. Uh, XML file. Instead of writing uh, a category or uh, uh, this is a category of rep links or something else like count, I just used these kinds of um, labels. Those are uh, constants and here you have uh, J category. J means it's Joomla and I don't have to translate it because Joomla says it's category and then I use category. These mods uh, with my name in it are my own translations. So I just have to put these three lines, uh, three words in a language file and translate it. So this is what you get. And this is what I did. I created two files, uh, the ini, sysini, but also for German. Uh, an, an, a folder for German and two German files. And you see, I only put two, the, the, the name of the, the extension and the description of the extension. So uh, uh, these are visible in the back end when you go to the module uh, manager, install new module. Um, this is the result. Here the English, here the German. And that's the language files. Um, Fuse is another way to create more flexibility in your component, module, and component also. Um, Joomla has uh, those uh, 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 files that you could use uh, in a template override. Um, for instance, if I want to create uh, my own template override of the default of my own module, I uh, go to my template, to my folder, HTML, and there I put uh, put it in a, in a special folder. And this file I can change, and with an update, uh, it doesn't uh, break my, my module. Um, Therefore, if, if you want to, change, uh, to create an override, you need FTP access. And maybe you have some administrators, and you want to, to give the administrators more uh, flexibility to choose which kinds of, of layout they want to use. So Joomla has alternative uh, views. So um, you have to do two things. You have to define it in your XML file. And you also have to um, create a new PHP file in your TMPL. Uh, you can name it anything you want. For instance, um, well, let's first uh, show you how I did it. Um, these are the lines of code you need to put in your XML file uh, to 
give the administrators the possibility to uh, view different layouts, select different layouts. So this lines of code will uh, give in uh, with on the options alternative layout, and it says default because I only have default.php. So I created this default.php. I added some line of code, the item created, which will display the the create date from the database, and now I have two options, default or with date, and this is what you get. Um, when I started with this, I had a problem because I used, I think it was an underscore in my name, like with underscore date, and I think it didn't work. Uh, do you know why it is? It strips it, okay. It took me half an hour and then... Uh, <laughs> So you can use uh, the, the normal uh, breaks, um, uh, the dashes, I think it's called, but you can't use underscore. So I just didn't use any. Um, there are also some uh, advanced parameters. Uh, for instance, uh, the alternative layout are just explained. You have a module class suffix. You know what a module class suffix is? It's, um, yeah, exactly. Um, the module class suffix, if you just put your module uh, uh, in a module position and you put the same module on this in the same module position uh, below it, they look the same. You can put some code in your template file, in your CSS, uh, which says maybe, underscore different, uh, and then you define it. And what you do here is you say module class suffix is underscore different. So you can have the same module with different layout, but you have to style it in your uh, CSS. Um, caching and cache time, they are also uh, very handy to use. It will just display this one. Mm. This is the code you have to add. You can just look at uh, any of other uh, Joomla's modules. What I don't know is the cache mode, why uh, uh, this field is with it. I just use it because all our modules use it as well. Um, what you see here, I don't have to define anything. Uh, I mean, these are all uh, default descriptions, so I don't have to create a, a language file for these kinds of uh, things. Uh, then maybe you are ready with your module and you want to ship it to other people they, uh, so that other people can use it as well. Or you have one module and you uh, want to install it on customers' websites. Of course, you can just upload the files and use Discover, but this is better if you create just a, a distribution file. Um, you create a, a .zip archive. Uh, in it, you put your uh, XML file your PHP file, your helper file, and also a language file, and delay uh, the, the HTML output files. Just put it in a zip file and then it should be okay. Um, but you have to describe some. You have to, uh, I already had uh, my uh, module name, uh, my PHP file, my XML file, and the helper.php I have to define as well. And I think it was since Joomla 1.5, uh, you can define a folder and everything which in is, is in a folder will be installed. Um, when you have it ready, just test it on another website if it works okay. Um, I have had problems in the past when I uh, uh, created something on, I think it was on my Linux machine and I want to install it on uh, Windows, I had some problems or maybe vice versa. So uh, uh, testing it on different uh, sites is, is a good thing to do. Then um, you all know the update mechanism of Joomla, the one-click updater. You can put it in your uh, module as well. Um, you have to do two things. You have to create a manifest XML file. Uh, in, your, uh, in your own XML file, it's which, which says update servers, and then you put some information about where the server with the, um, the repository for your module is. And this server, for instance, your company website, you have to put an XML file and a zip file to download. So this is what I did. 
update servers. It's uh, at the bottom of my XML file. Um, my, the name of my uh, module, the place of my, uh, uh, I have my own company with a folder called updates and there I put this XML file. Uh, there is no, should not be a space in it. Oh, I wrote it here, no spaces. <laughs> Uh, I think it was with uh, with the layout, and, uh, but uh, it's just uh, there should be no spaces in it. Um, my XML manifest file is the file I have to put on my server. Um, it says uh, this is the URL, and here it says uh, the encoding version UTF-8. Um, my name of the, the the module, the version of my module. Um, I was doing, uh, my, my version on my computer was version two, and here it's 2.1, so it's a, new, uh, a newer version. Uh, you, you can put some information, and this is important, because here you, you say which version it is for Joomla. So if you have a, a, a module which is also for Joomla 2.5, you have to create two instances, one for uh, 3.01 uh, and one for 2.5. Excuse me? Yes, yes, plugins, components, modules, I think even templates, I'm not sure. Language files, yeah. Um, oh yeah, and the update me mechanism itself. When you go uh, uh, to extensions and then extension manager, uh, there's a button called update. If you click it, uh, Joomla will look in all the XML files and it will create new references in um, uh, a table called updates. Um, if you know there's an update and uh, you can't find anything, first check the XML file you created in your browser. So uh, go to uh, this, uh, look, look uh, if, if it's visible. If you don't see this XML, you have a problem because some people uh, add some stuff to the htaccess file, so XML files won't be uh, retrieved. And yeah, it should be visible. If it's not visible, uh, people can't access it. Um, and also, sometimes you have to reinstall your module to get it working correctly. I don't know why, uh, it, it helped me. So uh, this is, I think, everything you know, uh, you have to know about uh, how to create modules. Um, are there any questions? Um, the question was, um, how can I abbreviate it? <laughs> um, if you use uh, uh, Joomla's cache, and if you use cache with your own module, um, for instance, there are changes, something changes in, uh, in your uh, module. For, uh, let's assume there are, there are some new web links. How can a client reset the cache? That's, that's it? Yeah. Um, I think uh, uh, they just have to go to uh, remove the cache or empty the cache. I'm not sure, but I can test it. Control F5, mm, control F5 doesn't work with that because the cache is on, uh, on Joomla's side itself, I think. Uh, it's, it's Joomla's cache, not, not the cache of your browser. I think so. Uh, I will test it in a minute because I think I still have some couple of minutes. Do I? Yeah, I do. So I, I how much? Ten minutes. This is a nice question. So um, I, I will just go to a couple of other questions and then I, we will test this. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, uh, to be honest, uh, I do it manually, uh, but I know that there are some uh, useful tools like Ant or Ping, and you can uh, create, it can create packages for you, but uh, it's a new language, you have to learn how to work with this, but if you know it. Sorry, which? Easy Creator, okay. No. But also the um, uh, uh, server information, the, the, the manifest file you have to put on your server. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Otherwise I will go uh, to test this. Uh, Okay, we have this uh, Joomla. Uh, here I have some um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, oh. um, I'm not used uh, on running on my uh, uh, Apple anymore because I have a Linux machine, uh, the same as you have, uh, ThinkPad. But uh, I had problems with Telestream Presenter, so I have to get this out of my uh, cupboard again. It didn't work, no. <coughs> I used Wine, and it didn't work. Uh, Linux, yes. Um, okay, this is the website. Uh, if I just uh, create a new web link, um, Okay, so um, I have this new web link, zero hits, and if I go to the front end, it should be on top of it, yeah, Joomla Day Germany. Um, so uh, what if I enable cache, uh, system, global configuration, um, Yeah, I choose for conservative caching because I have really have hard times with this progressive caching. Uh, even at the client, complained that his uh, captcha didn't work anymore. But it was he just enabled this uh, 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 progressive caching him himself. Um, caching fine, so this should be okay. So if I go to the front end. If I go to system uh, clear cache, it should say, no, I don't see it. Oops. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I also have to uh, enable cache in my module. Uh, options and advanced options. Caching use global, oh, it should be there. This is weird. Um, now let's add a new web link. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it's uh, I don't have to refresh anything, it just shows it. And caching is on. Uh, 
uh, it doesn't have any uh, mod underscore and then my own module. So I think I made a mistake in my module or it just doesn't work. I think it's a mistake somewhere. I think so, my module should be here. Yeah. Um, has anyone an idea what I did wrong? <laughs> I think. Um, well, I was looking uh, for my module of the latest web links, and what I uh, think is I should look at how the um, menu module or maybe the breadcrumbs uses this uh, uh, caching uh, lines of code and use those. Um, maybe it works when I do it, do it like that. Um, I have uh, net, oh, NetBeans, and this is my XML file. Uh, I said breadcrumbs, didn't I? So I look at the XML file of the breadcrumbs. Uh, up. Here it said advanced, first the layout, module class, and here's cache. Guest, guest visitors, but I, I was not logged in on the front end. Uh, that is good to know. I will try it with another browser. Maybe uh, I am logged in in the back end. Uh, yeah, but maybe it sees I'm the same person, the same uh, IP. I, I don't know. <laughs> I will just test. First, I will um, remove these lines of code. Okay. Then I go back to the back end extensions module manager, recent web links, uh, oh, options. By the way, uh, who in this audience uh, uses 3.1 already? And who's still on 2.5? And who's on 1.5? 1.0? Membo? Um, when I started with 3.0, uh, uh, I had some problems because it was different. And I thought, yeah, why did I change it? But then I had to uh, work for maybe two, two weeks uh, on a website for a customer who needed 3.0. And after that, I went back to 2.5. Ooh, this looks really old fashioned. <laughs> and now I really love 3.0, uh, uh, 3.1. Uh, Use global, cache time 900, I make 1800, just for the fun. Uh, now I go back to system uh, clear cache. There's nothing here. Um, I go here. Lo local host 8000. Oh. Uh, sorry? Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, Here it says Netherlands. So I go back with my browser. Uh, component, web links. I have to put it in the other resources, otherwise it won't be shown. <coughs> okay. It doesn't show now. If I go to the back end of my Joomla website, 
uh, to uh, my clear cache. I hope. Yes. So um, I made a mistake somewhere in my own module in the, in the XML file. Um, if you run into these kinds of problems, just go to uh, one of the uh, uh, Joomla modules which actually works because it's uh, in the back end and it shows um, the, uh, in the, in the clear cache uh, uh, list. And look at uh, the, the code. Uh, now I'm really curious what I did wrong. So uh, I will um, compare what I did with uh, my own code. So I know it's for the future what I did wrong. Um, but if I say uh, delete and I go to the front end, it shows Milky Way, which I just added. So I hope this is an answer to your question. And thank you for your question because uh, it, it solved me, uh, it gave me also new insight. Um, are there any other questions? Do we have time for it? No other questions? <laughs> You mean tabs, like the slider tabs? It's, uh, yeah, you. Uh, Joomla does it for you. If I say here advanced, um, for instance, I, I say here, just add this, I save it, and if I go to the back end of my extension, module manager, I should have a new option. Uh, oh, this, these tabs. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I, th I don't think you can, uh, it's just how Joomla uh, arranges it. I, I thought that you meant these one, but the you see the interesting question, I should uh, do it differently like this. Um, uh, Joomla extension, uh, Joomla modules? Okay, uh, do you know which ones? Okay, let's look at it. Options, custom outputs, yes. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I have to look into that. Thank you. Uh, custom. Could be that it's in the component of Joomla. Uh, I mean, the module component of Joomla. Um, uh, what's the name again of this custom output? Okay, uh, custom output. So what I can do is, I in the back end of Joomla, I go to um, I go to extensions uh, language manager. I say overrides. I say uh, new. And I look for uh, custom output. Oh, this, uh, I have to go to the back end first. Um, uh, English administrator, because otherwise you look in uh, for the front end. And now I will uh, look for uh, custom custom output. It's Custom output, does it? Custom. Okay, this is what I wanted to know. Maybe it could be easier, but now I go to my uh, IDE. I, I use NetBeans, and I look for file, uh, find in projects, and uh, only So 
So now I'm looking for this language uh, string, which is an edit of, oh, it's a bit more. <laughs> Uh, call modules. It's in the module. And in the term in, yeah. Uh, go. Oh, I do it wrong. I better. Oh. Um, <laughs> screen is so small here. <laughs> ah, here it says mod custom output. Uh, so uh, uh, here it's defined. So I, I think you can't define it in, um, in your own modules because uh, it's in the code of Joomla itself. Uh, has content. I can't see what you mean, uh, special layout. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>